Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering big tech fires diversity teams say DEI is no longer necessary. Well, I could have told them that, but they didn't ask me. They had to figure it out on their own and spend millions of dollars. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the Wall Street Journal, CIOs, that's chief information officers, say affirmative action ruling could set back progress in tech diversity. Executives are questioning what a landmark Supreme Court decision on college admissions means for diversity hiring efforts. It means the end of discriminatory hiring. They all know this. They're not sitting around trying to figure out what it means. They know what it means. They're trying to avoid what it means, and it's not working. Microsoft is out there saying, hey, look, we don't need you guys anymore. We're not so concerned about diversity anymore. Coming from Business Insider, Microsoft laid off a DEI team and its lead, the team lead, the person in charge of the team, very unprofessionally wrote an internal email blasting how DEI is no longer business critical. Well, it's not business critical. Do you know what business critical is? Yes, you do. It is what you think it is. But here's the definition. Business critical is an adjective that means something that is essential for a business to continue operating and be successful. So DEI is not considered necessary for big tech companies to continue operating and be successful. How heartless, how destructive. Well, now you know how people feel who weren't given a fair chance based on their talent, their skills, their abilities, their nature of how hard they work to just get an opportunity to try to work and build a career. Now you know how it feels. Everyone with some kind of diversity degree, everyone who's been given a chance at a company, but a chance that maybe they didn't deserve, a chance that would help them make some kind of a quota for hiring illegally based on race or gender or sexual preferences. Everyone there is now disadvantaged because they can't move up in the company because there aren't even diversity teams, there aren't diversity managers who are trying to focus on giving you an extra opportunity. And don't get me wrong, for the people who were basically innocent in all this, who were put into positions that never fit them in the first place, they're going to find that first the diversity team hiring managers are going to go. And then people are going to start getting reviews that are not based on their skin color or their gender or their sexual preference. When you get a work review, it's going to be based on what you're actually doing at work. Your manager is going to have to be doing it that way from now on. I feel bad for those people because they're not going to be able to keep these jobs. And then I don't know where they're going to move on to try to set up a normal job and have a normal career. They're victims in this too. But for the people who were obnoxious about this, the people who were cocky about this, they deserve what they're going to get. And what they're going to get is thrown out of professional work environments. Can you imagine how many people are going to still be looking for jobs that focus on diversity all at the same time? There'll be no serious business case for hiring them, only a diversity case. And that case is now getting closed. And from ABC News, how corporate America is slashing DEI workers amid backlash to diversity programs. DEI officers say they face cuts in the years since George Floyd's death. And obviously the first thing that comes is you get rid of the managers who are pushing DEI. The next thing that happens is the employees who were hired on the DEI basis. This is just straight black and white business. This is how it goes. If you got a big tech DEI job, those are not the nicest people in the world. Big tech doesn't love anyone. Big tech loves power. If you can't help them, you're not going to stay there. And from the Washington Post, 2024 might be do or die for corporate diversity efforts. Here's why. As lawsuits rise and opponents like Elon Musk declare that DEI must die, companies are pulling back from some initiatives. And this Washington Post piece goes back to December 2023. It's July now. It's much worse now. DEI is on the way out. From Business Insider, Microsoft laid off a DEI team and its lead wrote an internal email blasting how DEI is no longer business critical. Yes, it's not business critical whatsoever. If that DEI team lead manager was being honest, they would have said DEI never was business critical. It was an entitlement program forced on corporations. 
And now that the fad is ending, those people got to go. After Microsoft laid off an internal team focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, a team leader blasted the company for a lack of investment in these efforts. Quote, true systems change work associated with DEI programs everywhere are no longer business critical or smart as they were in 2020, according to a leader of the team who wrote this in an email sent to thousands of employees, which was viewed by Business Insider. Now, of course, there's always going to be a lack of investment in trying to build out these DEI programs inside of a company because they make no business sense. They never did make business sense. You could put all of a business's resources into DEI and you'd never get a return on investment. And for someone who was a DEI team lead to send an email like this to thousands of employees is wildly inappropriate. And if that person ever had a chance of getting another job, they just gave up that chance by sending this ridiculous, inappropriate internal email. The email says the team was eliminated because of changing business needs as of July 1st. It's unclear how many employees were affected. The team leader, whose identity Business Insider has confirmed, did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Many technology companies, including Microsoft, made commitments to improve diversity efforts after the death of George Floyd in 2020 and the protests that followed. In 2020, Microsoft pledged to double the number of black leaders within the company by 2025. The company's progress on this pledge is also unclear. If the company was anywhere close to reaching that quota pledge, which is completely illegal, we would have heard about it, and they also wouldn't be firing their diversity managers. Despite those commitments, many tech companies have appeared to retreat somewhat from diversity efforts. Zoom laid off a DEI-focused team earlier this year, according to Bloomberg. Google and Meta also cut DEI programs last year, according to CNBC. But our diversity and inclusion commitments remain unchanged, according to Microsoft spokesperson Jeff Jones, who said this in a statement. However, notice he didn't put the E in there for diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's what's been going on. Multiple major corporations, human resources organizations, companies and people in positions of power are dropping the E part from diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's the first part of all of this collapsing and going away throughout industry. The E part is the entitlement part, the equity part. That's the part that let HR cat ladies do whatever they wanted to try to push their agenda on even a company specific basis. There is no legal definition for how you get equity at a company from the human resources department. That free reign to destroy companies and discriminate unfairly is now gone. Microsoft spokesperson Jeff Jones continues, quote, our focus on diversity and inclusion is unwavering, and we're holding firm to our expectations, prioritizing accountability, and continuing to focus on this work. Microsoft has typically made cuts to its workforce at about this time of year when its fiscal year rolls over. Lately, layoffs at Microsoft and technology companies in general have become more common. The company announced plans last year to cut 10,000 employees within the first few months of 2023. It's conducted additional rounds of layoffs since then. There are layoffs everywhere. It's not just Microsoft and it's not just big tech. And from the Wall Street Journal, CIO say affirmative action ruling could set back progress in tech diversity. A CIO is a chief information officer. A chief information officer is the corporate executive in charge of information technology strategy and implementation. What does that have to do with diversity? Really nothing. And from ABC News, how corporate America is slashing DEI workers amid backlash to diversity programs. Years after the death of George Floyd shined a spotlight on societal inequalities, diversity professionals say some companies are turning their backs on the progress that's been made to address them. As of now, there is still a career for something called diversity professionals. That is going to be gone in about three or four years, maybe five years. That won't even be something that's publicly talked about. So these guys had better go into human resources or some other career, maybe sales, because the job diversity professional is clearly on the way out. Madison Butler is one of the many diversity, equity, and inclusion professionals that companies previously brought on their payrolls to ensure their business is equitable and accessible for people of all backgrounds. But in recent months, Butler said she has found it increasingly hard to find work, and she's not alone. I hope she married well. Well, just put it that way. DEI positions have been disproportionately hit by layoffs across industries, 
but particularly at tech companies, which have faced financial challenges as sales slow from the blistering pace attained during the pandemic. When Ms. Butler reached out to DEI professionals who plan to hire her for consulting, she said companies have told her, oh, this person is no longer with the company. Oh, this person has been laid off. Oh, this person no longer works here effective last month. Melody, who is only using her first name for privacy reasons, is also a DEI professional, and she said she was laid off along with others on her DEI team within just a few months of their hiring. Quote, it's difficult to be somewhere for a brief period of time and feel like you didn't even have the time to make the impact you wanted to make, according to Melody. The workplace is so full of human beings and we're not robots. We definitely need people at work who can help us feel like we belong there. I mean, in all seriousness, do you really think this has a chance of continuing because Melody's insight is we're not robots yet. Yeah, we know we're not robots. We don't need to get that personal with people at work to try to make them feel like they fit in. Either you know how to fit in in a social environment or you don't. And of course, newsflash, not everyone of every kind, of every type, feels comfortable in every social situation, whether it's at work or it's outside of work. And to try to add extra people as some kind of a guide so you can feel like work is home and home is work and these are your friends at work. It's like that that was always a really silly idea. And it's not something that's even achievable. Were it achievable, it's one thing. But the more comfortable you want to make people feel at work, the less you can ask of them at work. You can't make demands on people and also try to make their work environment some fun, relaxing, comfortable place. People can make themselves comfortable based on their abilities, based on their skill set that allows them to actually function at work. Yes, of course, work can be a welcoming environment, but you can be welcomed in the door. And when you're there, you're not there to play. You're there to actually get things done. George Floyd, in case you hadn't heard, was a black man, and he tragically died during an altercation with a Minneapolis police officer in May 2020 during an arrest. His death prompted a nationwide movement in which protesters demanded individuals and organizations alike take action in addressing societal injustices that impact historically marginalized groups. We can talk about the George Floyd toxicology report, but that's not what this video is about. To accomplish this, some companies sought out the expertise of DEI professionals like Butler and Melody. But we suddenly saw everyone coming out of the woodwork wanting to hire a lot of them, hiring inaugural DEI folks according to Melody. And you had to wonder, like, are people actually ready for this? Or is this a trend that we're seeing? No, it's actually, Melody, look, anything that happens and starts to build momentum behind it and happens more frequently is considered a trend. What Melody would say if Melody knew what she was talking about when being quoted by a national publication like ABC News is that she was wondering if DEI was a fad. And yes, it was a fad. And now the fad is ending. A fad is just something that's popular that all of a sudden people are talking about and then soon enough they're not talking about it anymore because they've moved on to either a more substantial trend that becomes a functional change in society or the next fad. DEI initiatives are often intended to address workplace culture and conditions such as inaccessibility in the workplace for disabled people or retention rates for workers of color and other inequalities faced by marginalized groups. When they're desperate to defend DEI, they always like to refer to disabled people first, or veterans first, and then people of color. And then they'll mention people who are in the LGBT community. And then they'll mention maybe Native Americans. When they're making demands on you, they start with the people of color. And then they go to LGBT, and then they might or might not even mention disabled people. When they feel like they're losing their position of power, they start making references to, for example, disabled people. Of course, people of different races or sexual preferences or different religions are not the same as disabled people. But when the DEI people are pushing an agenda, they use disabled people and veterans as a shield. And that shield's not holding up anymore. From September 2019 to September 2020, job postings for diversity, inclusion, and belonging positions on the hiring website Indeed rose by 56%. A LinkedIn study found that chief diversity and inclusion officer positions grew by 168% from 2019 to 2022. 
The rapid organizational movement towards addressing inequalities was initially exciting for DEI professionals. But in just a couple of years, that excitement wavered as growth rapidly fell apart. Quote, the honeymoon is over, Cecil Howard, a DEI consultant and former chief diversity officer at the University of South Florida, told ABC News. Right after George Floyd's death, everybody who didn't have a diversity office quickly created a diversity office, he added. A few years later, they started realizing we checked the box and things are a little quieter now. No, they started realizing we've brought in these people to manage a problem that has nothing to do with running our business. And as a result, everyone's confused, angry. There's tremendous friction in the organization because people aren't being judged based on the merit of the quality of the work they can do and the quality of the work they're actually doing while at the office. The purpose of a business is to serve its customers and provide a return on investment to its owners, as well as treat the community around it nicely. It has nothing to do with trying to right societal wrongs in the perception of some specific group of people. And that's why DEI is beginning to disappear. Starting in late 2020, months after the death of George Floyd set off a racial reckoning, a host of companies escalated cuts of DEI professionals, according to a survey of more than 600 companies from the data firm Revealio Labs. Last year, the layoffs accelerated significantly, according to the study. One in three DEI professionals lost their roles over a one-year period ending in December. Over that period, the study added, non-DEI workers experienced a relatively lower attrition rate of 21%. That's more than a 50% increase if you're a DEI person for losing your job. The job loss is owed to several trends, a sluggish economy that prompted cost cuts, a softening of the scrutiny that held corporations to account over racial justice, and a rise of conservative backlash against DEI, according to some DEI professionals. Because the lawsuits are coming out of the woodwork, even Hollywood has lawsuits over DEI nonsense now. Choosing certain writers only based on skin color. Of course, the more illegal things you do, the more likely it is you're going to get caught. Quote, in 2020, a lot of organizations reacted to the market, reacted to social events taking place without really having a clear understanding of what DEI is and how it should be enabled in the business. According to Christy Lindor, a diversity strategist and CEO of Tessie Consulting. Quote, when things get rough, these are the areas that go, Lindor added. Because as Lindor and the rest of the DEI hustlers know, there is no business case for DEI. It's the opposite of a business case. It's a new priority that you try to throw onto a company and an organization and a system that creates endless friction and makes it impossible to operate as smoothly as it could otherwise. Imagine if you weren't allowed to have your own friends. You couldn't communicate with the people you like to communicate with. You had to communicate with people of certain genders and certain skin colors and certain sexual preferences because some authority told you so. You went to your cell phone and your cell phone said, no, you don't have enough people you can text who are more diverse. You need to change your mix. Change your mix of people that you associate with, with this percentage of this skin color and that percentage of this sexual preference. And you don't even know anybody of this religion. You need to know these people. And now you guys work together and interact together. And that's how ridiculous it is to try to force this on a company. And it's even worse in a professional environment than it is in a personal environment. Literally, someone has to make the donuts. That means they need to know how to make the donuts. That means they need to show up early enough to make the donuts. You have to have all the ingredients ready. You have to make sure you're making the donuts that customers actually want. You still have to promote the donut business. Running a business has so many merit-based demands on it. It's impossible to incorporate concepts like equity in a professional environment. It's just at the expense of everyone else who's working hard. So they have to work a little bit harder to earn a little bit less. Speaking of laid off DEI professionals, Howard noticed job losses concentrated among individuals who criticized an employer's diversity related policies or offered ambitious ideas for reform, he said. Yes, because those employees are actually there not thinking about what's good for the business or the other employees, they're thinking about what's good for their ideological agenda. Why would you keep those people working at your company if you had any way you can get rid of them? I'd get rid of all of them. Well, the separations weren't coming from organizations that were really serious about enhancing their culture, he said, describing a chilling effect for DEI professionals. Well, we don't need you to be a voice. We need you to be a face. You can imagine these are employees complaining about having to be a face, not even saying we need you to be productive. Just show up and look a certain way so we can hit a certain quota box so people stop annoying us. 
We'll take you as a total loss. But just show up to work so we can say we have some diversity in case anyone bothers us about that. We'll take the loss. We're not expecting you to actually do any work. That's so dehumanizing and inappropriate for that employee to be just a face. Let people do what they're good at doing. Let them learn how to do what they're good at doing, but don't leave them in positions where it doesn't fit just to look a certain way. And certainly no one should be promoting jobs where people are there to be just the face or where people are there to just push an ideological agenda. Just go to the job and do your work. And if you can't do the work, you shouldn't be in the job. At the same time, conservative elected officials such as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Texas Governor Greg Abbott began to target DEI initiatives. DeSantis last month signed into law a bill that prohibits state or federal spending on DEI programs at public universities in Florida. The acronym DeSantis says should be reinterpreted as discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. In February, Abbott's office ordered state agencies to stop using diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in hiring. And that's what the governors are supposed to do. They're supposed to be protecting people who live in their state. Governor Abbott's chief of staff claimed these programs proactively encourage discrimination in the workplace and do the opposite of what they claim to do. And in June, Greg Abbott signed a ban on diversity offices and state-funded higher education institutions. In a statement, a spokesperson from his office told ABC News that the issue is not diversity. The issue is that equity is not equality and DEI practices conflate the two. The statement continues, some universities and woke professors have been using DEI to advance political agendas and exclude conservative viewpoints on college campuses. These efforts adversely affect our students, limit exposure to diverse thought, and destroy our education system. Lindor accused elected officials like Abbott and DeSantis of weaponizing DEI for political purposes, calling conservative political attacks one of the driving forces behind cuts in the field. Butler and Melody, the DEI professionals who don't have any work right now, believe that anti-DEI policies intend to turn back progress made by marginalized groups towards equality. Now they want to use the word equality, not equity, because they know equity is entitlement and equity is impossible to achieve. It's just nonstop entitlement wherever you go. Well, people fear losing power, said Butler. So much of this work has been centered around deconstructing things like white supremacy. And those status quos and white supremacy protect people in positions of power. Which is a nice way of saying it's just about getting power for whoever she wants to give power to because that's her ideology. Which is fine. That's political. Go fight for it politically. But don't expect companies to pay for this nonsense. And don't expect other employees to sit by and say, yeah, this is okay. That's where the lawsuits are coming from. Without these DEI policies, professionals fear that organizations may fall back into patterns that create unhealthy or exclusive work cultures that drive away diverse candidates, employees and customers alike. But if we don't have employees that understand people of different cultures, different backgrounds, companies are going to find themselves losing good employees to discriminatory practices, said Britt Levy, a former DEI employee who was also laid off from Facebook. She continued, quote, it's going to be an uphill battle for retention. Employee morale is going to go down because now you have these employees that feel like targets. They have targets on their back. Yeah, people do have targets on their back because people like this put people into jobs that they had no business being in. Jobs where they really were just the face of the company because they couldn't do the work. How long do you think those employees are going to last? They're not going to last. They're victims here too, but they shouldn't have been cocky about it. They shouldn't have been smug about it. Whoever had an attitude about trying to take advantage of their skin color or their race or their sexual preferences to get a job that they knew they shouldn't have been getting is going to suffer over this. Companies choosing to slash DEI programs could face difficulty hiring candidates from underrepresented groups and understanding the needs of a diverse customer base, according to Linder. The companies know how to handle their customers. They don't need diversity hustlers to tell them, oh, you're not going to have certain kinds of customers unless you hire more faces that look like this or genders that look like that or sexual preferences that are like this, the companies know it's nonsense. They always knew it was nonsense. They did it because they felt they had to do it. No sophisticated business person thought this was a serious thing. Everyone knew it was a power grab. No one knew exactly how long it was going to last. But it's not just about being progressive as an organization, Howard said. Start looking at the bottom line. <laughs> they have looked at the bottom line. There is no business case. They tried to make a business case. McKinsey, a consulting company, even lied about the business case. They were caught lying about the business case. There is no business case. Or companies would be doing more DEI, not phasing out DEI. 
Some states that have banned workplace affirmative action, a diversity initiative that allows employers to consider race as one factor in hiring, saw that such bans negatively impacted diversity in the workplace, according to a Harvard study. The study analyzed the workforces of four state governments following the ban and found that these states saw significant declines in the number of black women, Latino men, and Asian women working there. Uh, I mean, just crazy question for the Harvard study. What about the quality of the work that the employees were doing? I mean, it's nice to want to give people certain opportunities, but they have to earn those opportunities. And the most important thing in an organization is if it's productive and responsible. Meanwhile, the number of white men in the workplace has increased, the study says. I mean, whatever their skin color is, if they could do the job, let them do the job. And here they go with this silliness. Diversity has also proven to be good for business, according to several studies that indicate that companies that are more diverse are more innovative and in turn more profitable. Companies that fail to diversify could fall behind, especially in the tech industry, where a surge in the development of AI has heightened the importance of innovation, Lindor said. Yeah, and that's why Lindor can't find paid work. But we're seeing more candidates who want to join companies that align with their values, Lindor said. It's difficult for companies to authentically say DEI is a priority when they're cutting. That's why they're all removing the E from DEI. And they're just talking about diversity and inclusion. And when they make references to it, they talk about a diversity of viewpoints and actual different ideas, which completely undercuts what the DEI people wanted it to be about. They wanted it to be only a certain approved skin color that got opportunities, only certain approved genders and sexual preferences that got certain opportunities, and it's going away. Quote, we're going to start to see the results of that in the marketplace in the years to come, she added. Big tech has crunched the numbers, and they've said, you know what? We don't have a business case here. It's not business critical. We don't need to do this. It's not necessary for our companies to be successful, profitable, or socially responsible to indulge in this nonsensical DEI agenda. And that's why they're firing the diversity team managers, which of course can only lead to them letting people go for not producing good work based on the merit of what they were there to do in the first place. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.